It's a great privilege for me to work uh, on Yal Africa with Yal Africa. Yal Africa is a movement for Africans and by Africans. Therefore, it is an NGO registered by the Rwandese government in Kigali. Yala Africa is working out of a great belief in the future of Africa. For Africa to become more democratic, to develop its economy. And I personally believe that Africa has a great future. We contribute modestly to innovation in uh, the field of nutrition, especially in uh, Kigali, Rwanda and uh, Freetown Sierra Leone, together with our partners from the FAO. We work uh, a lot on youth empowerment because the future of Africa is in the hands of the young people of Africa. And hundreds of thousands of young Africans are following us on Facebook. There's much to work with Africa and to learn from Africa also in the field of peace. We are working with uh, people from, who have worked with the great Nelson Mandela in South Africa um, and with people who have worked on reconciliation and forgiveness in Rwanda. And it's a great lesson for us here in the Middle East. Yala Africa will continue to empower the youth of Africa, will work hard on innovation out of a very optimistic belief that the future is with the young Africans. Thank you very much. My name is Barbara Borgese. I'm the program manager for Yala Africa's nutrition program in Kigali, Rwanda. We're implementing our program in partnership with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, and the city of Kigali. And our objective is to fight child malnutrition, which currently affects 24% of children in Kigali and 34% of children in Rwanda. It is very well known that malnutrition, and chronic malnutrition in particular, can have devastating long-term effects on the physical and cognitive development of children. What is perhaps less well known or counterintuitive is that child malnutrition can also have devastating effects on the economic development of a nation. The Rwandan Ministry of Health published a study entitled The Cost of Hunger in Rwanda. In it, it highlighted that 13% of students in primary school have repeated one or more grades due to malnutrition, costing the country about 2.4 billion Rwandan francs, the equivalent of approximately 3.5 million US dollars. In other words, malnutrition is not only responsible for child illnesses and death, but also for reduced educational achievements, reduced productivity, and in the long term, reduced economic capacity for the entire country. This is the bad news. The good news is, it does not have to be this way. And in fact, the government of Rwanda has already made huge strides and great progress in curbing child malnutrition. And we at Yala Africa are proud to have aligned our own program with the national policies of fight malnutrition. We're also honored to have been invited to join the REACH Nutrition Technical Working Group which unites government, UN agencies, NGOs working in Rwanda on this common goal. In just one year, we have been able to provide training and support in bio-urban agriculture, including in the innovative spirulina aquaculture, plus nutrition and health education to over 5,000 youth and their caregivers. In addition, we've also established 19 community gardens and set up the very first community-run spirulina microfarm at Gatenga Health Center in the Kichukiru district of Kigali. Gatenga Health Center is currently administering spirulina as a food supplement to malnourished mothers and their children. And this is just the beginning. We're determined to make child malnutrition a thing of the past and are confident that together, we will be able to do so. Thank you so much for your support. I'm Hassan, the Ruko Program Manager of Yara Africa in Rwanda. In Rwanda, in partnership with the city of Chigari, we support the health centers, orphanage, schools, and cooperatives. 
this is a, a greenhouse of tomato. These tomato are used at the clean, at the health center, nutrition health center, and the, the excess is sold, and the fund from these tomatoes are used to equip the nutrition center and to buy the crops or the food that the health center doesn't have. These are basins of spirulina. Spirulina is a good and a rich food that help people to cure malnutrition. The process of drying spirulina, and this spirulina is used to is used at the nutrition center for people and children malnourished. Bravo for Yara Africa of what you are doing here in Rwanda. Thank you. Sylvia. I'm a program manager at Yala Africa. I'm in charge of our program in Freetown, Sierra Leone. So in Freetown we have implemented a youth-led microagriculture and nutrition program in schools and in orphanage. We work with a group of young and dedicated volunteers who have undergone training in urban agriculture practices in nutrition, health and hygiene with a specific uh, focus on Ebola. These young men and women have been working under extremely difficult circumstances, sometimes putting their own lives at risk, by going door to door to provide information and awareness messages about Ebola prevention to quarantined communities. They have also established a garden at the We Are The Future Center and Primary School. Um, the produce from the gardens are being used to provide nutritious meals to the children, and the kids are also now learning about uh, recognizing and growing crops and plants. I'm very, very impressed with the hard work that they're doing and the amazing results of the program in Freetown and uh, especially considering the very difficult situation in Sierra Leone and I'm very proud to be part of the program. I am John Donald Sandy, the program manager for Yala Africa Freetown Sierra Leone. Yala Africa is a registered youth and child serving agency that promotes the coordination of stakeholders to engage and empower youth and children in their communities for sustainable peace and development. In Freetown, we are training youth and children from the Way of the Future School, the Maga Community School, and the SOS Children's Village to set up school gardens and kitchen so they help them understand the relationship between what they grow, how they prepare it as food, and the effect it has on healthy living. The civil strife, which occurred between 1991 and 2001, eternally displaced an estimated 60% of the rural population to urban areas. After the cessation of hostilities, a significant number of rurally displaced persons refused to be repatriated to their rural communities. Rather, many prefer to migrate into the cities in search of jobs and improved living conditions. This increased population created high pressure on food supplies and urban facilities and services, such as roads, transportation, water supply, electricity, education, health, and many more. Majority of the population that migrated from rural areas are skillful farmers who develop a keen interest in urban agriculture as the best option for food supply and daily survival. Even though the world poses a serious challenge to our security system as well as our food supply system. But fortunately, the cessation of hostilities came about through a multi-stakeholders approach with the young people at the center of all arrangements. Similarly, the current Ebola outbreak that claimed thousands of lives in just one year has been forced to retreat and is almost at the point of surrender through a coordinated multi-stakeholders engagement that places youths and their communities at the center of all arrangement in the fight against the deadly Ebola virus. Now that we are almost at the end of the Ebola war, the devastation has increased the level of poverty, I call it youth and child poverty, with hunger, malnutrition, high unemployment, and poor human settlement at the forefront. We at Yala Africa Freedom believe that the fight against poverty must start now. 
We support the coordinated multi-stakeholders approach that places young people and their communities at the center of the fight against poverty. We therefore extend our appreciation to our partners, Yala Africa International, FAO Freetown City Council, Bread and Water for Africa, and a host of other partners. Hello, my name is Kofi Annan, Chair of the Kofi Annan Foundation and the 7th Secretary General of the United Nations. It is a pleasure to participate in this online conference organized by Yala Africa and Yala Young Leaders. I believe that young people are a crucial part of our society. Your voices must be heard. You can and must play an important role in shaping the policies that will directly impact your future. This is particularly true in Africa, which has the youngest population in the world. The you are a deep pool of talent and creativity that can be the key to a future of prosperity. The use of new technology and the internet can enhance dialogue and create a more open society. This greater connectivity allows you to share ideas and best practices to influence change and demand better governance. I would like to congratulate Yala Africa for inspiring and empowering young people to take action on a wide range of issues that are crucial to their future. You are proving a point I often make, that one is never too young to lead. You are our hope for the future, and I encourage you to go out and make a difference. I wish you every success in the future. We are all counting on it. How I wish I had been able to join you in person because gatherings like these which aim to unite the world community behind the development and well-being of, for instance, the African continent and its people are crucial for a more just and peaceful world. Tolerance of and curiosity about different cultures is very important in a world characterized by diversity. The challenge for us all is to see beyond our own noses, beyond the comfort of our own communities, beyond the sanctuaries of our institutional, cultural, religious, and national borders to recognize each other as members of one family, the human family. To know that no matter how different we may look or how curiously we behave, we are ultimately members of one family, God's family. We share a finite planet and we all have similar needs. We learned about the power of collective action for good in our struggle against apartheid. We could not have achieved our liberation without the help of people around the world who through the use of non-violent means, including sanctions, boycotts and divestment, compelled their governments and cooperations to reverse decades-long support for the then racist state. There was lots of money available to them to do business with South Africa, but they were willing to forego those riches to support a righteous cause. You too, can contribute your little bit of good wherever you are. If you put all of those little bits of good together, they will overwhelm the world. Let us raise awareness about Africa's diversity, beauty, and power. 
Let us raise the world's consciousness about the inequalities that still exist in our human family. Let us ask why some of our children, depending on where they live, automatically attend fantastic schools and universities, while others among us struggle for what we call universal access to education for our children. This is not just a moral imperative, but also an economic necessity. Education is the very foundation stone of self-sufficient and self-sustaining communities and nations. There is much that Africa can teach the world. As the cradle of humankind, we do have a little experience in the affairs of human beings, not least in our understanding of the power of community, reconciliation, and forgiveness. One of the jewels of our experience is something we call Ubuntu, which is really an understanding that we are sociable beings who rely on one another. A person is a person through other persons. When we swept apartheid away in South Africa, our remarkable president Nelson Mandela established a Truth and Reconciliation Commission when some would have preferred Nuremberg-style trials. The commission was harrowing with the most excruciating evidence of brutality and repression. But the people's power of forgiveness, of acceptance of one another, was truly astonishing. Forgiveness is transformative. It is a gift that presents an opportunity to make a new beginning. We are made for togetherness for goodness, for compassion. Thank you, Yala Africa, for launching this online movement to share Africa's experience. God bless you. My name is Dan Gustafson, and I am the Deputy Director General of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO. It is my pleasure to participate in the One Million Rally for Peace online conference being organized by Yala Young Leaders and Yala Africa. This online conference celebrates the reaching of one million Yala members, and I would like to congratulate you for this achievement. Let me say a few words describing the cooperation between FAO and the organizers. FAO is a specialized agency of the United Nations mandated to raise levels of nutrition through support to agricultural livelihoods and rural development. As you know, Yala Africa is dedicated to the empowerment of youth in Africa and provides a platform for dialogue, cooperation, and collective action on issues facing agriculture and African youth, such as HIV, AIDS, gender equality, and economic development. Together, we are implementing an innovative project in Kigali, Rwanda, and in Freetown, Sierra Leone, to empower young people in the fields of agriculture, health, and nutrition education in cooperation with national and municipal governments. We work together with schools, orphanages, and community health centers to fight child malnutrition and to support people living with HIV. The projects deliver an effective urban micro-gardening support program and also a nutrition and health education and awareness program for children and youth. In addition, through Facebook, weekly thematic discussions are held on nutrition, food security and development, on HIV AIDS prevention and protection, as well as on how to fight HIV AIDS related stigma and on questions regarding gender equality, gender-based violence and women's empowerment. Tens of thousands of youths across Africa participate in these discussions and share information and posts through clicks, likes, comments and shares. In Freetown, the project has expanded its initial planned set of activities to take into consideration the new realities the Ebola outbreak has presented. This youth-led approach 
focuses on supporting communities affected by Ebola with microagriculture and nutrition training together with awareness campaigns on Ebola prevention and recovery. Training in health and nutrition is particularly important in emergencies such as the Ebola crisis. Young volunteers are likewise an essential part of the country's strategy to stop the disease and help with the reconstruction phase. It is young people who often bear the brunt of poverty and hunger, and it is youth whose future physically, educationally, and as a result economically is crippled by malnutrition. And it is youth who must be more fully engaged in ending this scourge. In this regard, I would like to applaud all members of YALA for your vision for a world free of conflict and poverty and for your efforts to build a life for all where hunger and malnutrition are relics of the past. I would like to recognize all of you for taking action and continuing in the fight against injustice, social exclusion, and economic marginalization as it is clear that unless hunger and malnutrition are ended, we will not be able to build a better, more peaceful world. Thank you very much and best wishes for the conference. Dear Yala members, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to send my warm greetings from Kigali, Rwanda, at this historic occasion of one million rally for peace. I congratulate Yella's leadership on this milestone achievement. Rwanda fully supports Yella's mission of engaging youth both online and offline towards shaping a better and peaceful world for all mankind. We are proud of the work that Yella is doing in Rwanda to strengthen peace and resilience of our society after the genocide against Tutsi in 1994. In particular, I encourage the initiative to empower young people in the fields of food security, health, gender equality, economic development, and cultural expression. We are happy that the youth in the Akila Institute for Women in Kigali have become the first participants from Africa to the Yala School of Citizen Journalism. I wish you the happiest of celebrations and I look forward to expanding our excellent collaboration in the future. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Asante sana. Muchas gracias. Murakozecha. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Tony Sanganira, Minister of State in the Ministry of Agriculture and Animal Resources of the Republic of Rwanda. I'm humbled and greatly honored to send to you my greetings, but also the greetings from our people of the great nation of Rwanda on this occasion of the One Million Rally for Peace Conference. I do congratulate Yara Africa and Yara Young Leaders for organizing this event for the milestone of reaching one million members, but also, and most importantly, for the great achievements attained over the past one year. Rwanda is a young nation following the dark history that led due to bad leadership to the genocide against Tutsi in 1994. However, as a country while remembering, we have not ceased to rebuild ourselves and we are continuing to work hard for an even better future. Today, 60% of the Rwanda's population are young men and women aged 35 years old and below. A good number of these young people are today privileged to take up leadership positions in government, in the private sector and beyond and are forging ahead as one people that have decided to leave behind their dark past. The youth, the young adults and the rest of the citizens of Rwanda have made a commitment to not allow any more a genocide or any other crime against humanity to ever, ever happen again. The government of Rwanda, under the stewardship of His Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, has continuously put in place homegrown solutions that ensure that peace, security, 
unity, reconciliation, and national cohesion thrive. For example, our national judicial system, known as Gachacha, has been put throughout the country and was able to prosecute genocide perpetrators, but has also allowed the room for people to seek forgiveness from each other. Today, I'm delighted to say that as Rwandese people, we have accepted to live together side by side and we are continuing to build our nation. The tragic experiences of 1994 and before have taught us that for any development to happen, there is need for a secure, peaceful and stable country. This cannot be overemphasized. As a nation, we have values and cherish peace within our borders and beyond our borders. And we are alive to the fact that this is not something we can take for granted. We are well aware of the cost of not having a secure and a peaceful country. Therefore, allow me to once again emphasize that without peace, without security, there cannot be any meaningful and sustainable development. My message therefore to you, young leaders and citizens of the great continent of Africa, is that there is a need to understand the immense need to learn to live together despite our differences in race, religion, and our political views. The diversity we have and enjoy in Africa is great, and we must ensure that we harness and nurture the skills of everyone for development and the well-being of our people on the continent, but also across the globe. A wise man once said that union makes strength. Together, we can make this world a better place. I take this opportunity to appeal to you, young leaders, future leaders of this world, to embrace innovation and technology in each area of your specializations. I also urge you to take advantage of each opportunity you get to make a difference in your respective communities. I wish you a successful conference. The future of the world and the continent of Africa is in your hands. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Hope Tumkunde and I'm the Deputy Mayor of the City of Kigali in charge of social affairs. The City of Kigali has partnered with Global Forum Yara Africa to promote nutrition. Together we are implementing a nutrition program in schools and health centers. We have established a spirulina micro farm in one of the health centers. The spirulina is particularly being promoted to, as a food supplement for children and mothers with signs of malnutrition. I'm congratulating Yala Africa for all the efforts to promote nutrition and health among children. And I'm thanking them for sharing the information concerning health for children around the youth over the world. On this occasion, I'm especially congratulating Yala Africa for the One Million Rally for Peace Conference. As one of the many Rwandans who can testify what peace can help achieve, I'm particularly proud to be part of this conference. We are also happy that you will be celebrating the Peace Institute in honor of Nelson Mandela. We urge you to keep up the good job you are doing. Thank you. Greetings to you all from Kigali, Rwanda, the land of Thousand Hills. My name is Atahel Maiga, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations FAO representative in Rwanda. It is my pleasure to participate in the One Million Rally for Peace online conference organized by Yala Youth Leaders and Yala Africa. As you celebrate reaching One Million Yala members, I take this opportunity to share with you our delight in such an achievement. FAO global mandate is to raise levels of nutrition, improve agricultural productivity, better the lives of rural population, and contribute to the growth of the world economy. Eradicating hunger and achieving food security for all is at the heart of FAO's efforts to make sure people have regular access to enough high-quality food to lead active, healthy lives. In Rwanda, 
Global Forum Yala Africa is partnering with the city of Kigali and FAO within the framework of the We Are the Future nutrition program to contribute to the eradication of food insecurity and child malnutrition by training youth in urban and peri-urban agriculture, nutrition, health hygiene education, marketing, and life skills on the one hand, and empowering these youth to transfer the skills acquired to vulnerable children and, other, and their parents, caregivers on the other hand. I am delighted to note the progress recorded since the inception of the program in April 2014. Over 1,000 youth, children, and their caregivers have been trained, 19 demonstration gardens have been established, and the cultivation of spirulina, a protein high al rich alga that has proven nutritional benefits for malnourished children and other vulnerable groups including people living with HIV AIDS, has been introduced in three districts of Kigali. The first spirulina cooperative in Rwanda was recently established to promote research, production, and marketing of this highly nutritious alga. By coupling training in urban gardening with the cultivation of spirulina, which is 65% rich in protein, we will be contributing to combating chronic mal child malnutrition affecting over 40% of Rwandan children under five years old. Such laudable efforts need to be scaled up, notably through the type of partnership between FAO, the city of Kigali, government concerned ministries, and Global Forum Yala Africa. The objective of the We Are the Future Nutrition program is in line with FAO's first strategic objective, which is to contribute to the eradication of hunger, food insecurity, and malnutrition. It is also in line with Rwanda's Vision 2020, which indicates fighting child malnutrition and food insecurity as one of Rwanda's key priorities for achieving greater and sustainable economic development. As it is said, investing in youth is investing in securing the future. The project being implemented in Rwanda not only contributed greatly to the improvement of food security, nutrition, and health, but also positively impacted and changed the lives of children and youth in Kigali. With such achievements that need to be scaled up, I wish to reiterate that your time is now and upholding these successes is paramount. It is you, the youth, who have to continuously take up the challenges to end the scourge of hunger and malnutrition, coupled with other daily world conflicts and challenges. And unless these are ended, it will be difficult to build a better, more peaceful world. The vision bearer of Yala are highly appreciated for the tireless effort in this initiative. I wish to thank you once again and wish you a fruitful deliberation in this unique endeavor. Thank you very much, Murakoze Chana, as we say here in Rwanda. Hello, my name is Gabriel Rugalema, the FAO representative in Sierra Leone. I'm here representing the staff of the representation. Uh, together we join hands to congratulate Yela on this important milestone. May it remain an epic journey until you reach 100 million members and more. Membership is important, but doing something for humanity is even more important. We want to commend Yala for the various programs you have been running in uh, various countries of Africa. These programs have helped make a difference. You have today chosen a theme of Rally for Peace. Peace is a foundation for development and peace tends to be a scarce commodity in many countries in Africa. 
please continue to contribute to peace and to development of this continent. We wish you all the best and we look forward to continue working with you on the quest to help humanity overcome problems of insecurity, hunger and malnutrition. Thank you very much. Regards and greetings from Sierra Leone. Hi to all you Yala seekers of peace. I'm Patricia Amira and I'm a storyteller. I use my voice in media as a bridge of information to promote understanding, know-how and cohesion within communities, but also to just celebrate our humanity. Now, just as I choose to practice this, I'm also aware, just as you are, that the route to peace lies within each and every one of us that this intuitive knowledge has driven you all to form networking wheels of democratic expression is just brilliant. So it's my pleasure to be invited to join you all today as you commemorate your milestones on your journey. Now, I could go on for days, but the one thing that I feel that is imperative to share with you today is this. Understanding the power of your voice is one of life's greatest and most rewarding gifts. You have chosen to stand as voices of reason, of, of hope, of open and honest communication, knowing that in every action there lies the possibility of newer, more tolerant realities. Not just for your personal lives, by the way, but also within your communities. So what we choose to say, what we choose to utter using both our hearts and minds, therefore, is of vital importance. But you're on the right track anyway. So I stand with you and encourage you in this growing platform of dialogue to continue bridging the divide of the mind, giving voice to your experience wherever you may be and sharing your vision of a better future for all. So here's to you having a great one million online rally for peace. Hi, my name is Justin Simonin. I'm in charge of the Yala Africa Citizen Journalism Program in Rwanda. The Akina Institute for Women in Kigali, Rwanda is the first school in Sub-Saharan Africa to participate in this unique program. I'm reading the following message on the behalf of Alin Kabanda, Country Director at the Akira Institute for Women in Rwanda. Dear Yala members, congratulations on reaching 1 million members. That is an accomplishment worthy of praise. It is encouraging to know that so many young leaders have the desire to not only raise awareness, but also to take action to create an environment of peace and prosperity in our world. At Akina Institute for Women in Rwanda, we strongly believe in the empowerment of young people, especially young women. We believe that empowerment through education allows our Akira graduates to live happier and more fulfilled lives. Through education, our students are equipped to pursue professional careers in East Africa's fast and growing sectors, technology, business and hospitality management. We are thankful for the part that Yala plays in preparing our women for bright futures. Because of Yala, our students have opportunities to advance their journalism skills, to better understand world issues, and to be inspired to bring about change to their communities and the world at large. Yala members, you are the future. With your hard work and persistence, the future of the Middle East and Africa will be bright. Best regards, Alin Kabenda. The Citizen Journalism Program trained over 150 young people from the Middle East and Africa with practical skills in journalism, with the aim of creating a network of citizen journalists who will engage in cross-border dialogue and voice their opinion of the issues they face. Since April 2015, 28 young women from the Akira Institute for Women are enrolled in the Yala Africa Citizen Journalism Program. These students, first of their kind, gather every two weeks 
to learn directly from leading journalists and new media experts about ethics, writing and interview techniques, and photojournalism, among others. Through online lectures and writing assignments, they gain essential skills which will enable them to be the voice of the voiceless and to tell a different kind of African stories. Their stories will be published on Yala Africa's blog and Facebook page and will reach dozens of thousands of Yala members across Africa and beyond. Hello from Akita Institute for Women. My name is Jacqueline Mirunji. I'm studying hospitality management. I'm the president of the of Journalism Club. Our mission as the club is to promote creative writing skills among the club members. Hello, my name is Grace Ngavile. I am a student in information systems. I am also the deputy editor for the club. Uh, we publish a monthly newsletter. I am Joslyn Musengamala and I am pursuing information system. In journalism club, we have found a partnership with the Yara Academy and now they train us in journalism. My name is Mohanza Esther. I am a student for information system. What I have learned from Yara Academy is how I can write good articles or good stories. My name is Kanyana Sala. I am studying information system. What I have learned from Yala Academy is how I can use social media effectively. Hello, my name is Berize Uera. I am pursuing information system. What I have learned from Yala Academy is to act as the voice of voiceless. Thank, Thank you, Yala! Yala.